Russ, what did you think though of Deadpool and Wolverine? You know, as I've sat and ruminated on this, I really felt that one, on one side, the quality was great. There's great chemistry between um, Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, which is actually seen throughout the years. We've just seen that they have a great friendship and camaraderie that really plays out well on the screen. I love the kind of throwback to the kind of the the Marvel Fox universe. And so all these great characters kind of be reintroduced in a kind of unique ways. But on the other side, I'm quite conflicted because this is one that is not necessarily the MCU you would definitely want to share with others. Children should not be going to see this movie because it does have its bucket loads, bucket loads of violence. Deadpool, it's fun, but I kind of would have to put a caution on this one. And I think that there's a reason, but I'm going to unpack that a little bit more here in a minute. I want to first hear what your thoughts are, because I've been able to sit on this for a few days, but I think you just got the chance to see it here recently. Yeah, and a lot of what you're saying I totally agree with. Crude, crass, violent, vulgar, and you're a much bigger superhero movie aficionado than I am. I've dipped out of the MCU in the past couple of years, so I've missed a lot of the ones that you and plenty of other people have dismissed as not very good. And then as we get into these multiverse, 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 that I really liked in Deadpool and Wolverine, that as much as this is ridiculously complicated around the whatever is going on with the different universes, the movie constantly made jokes about that and constantly used the idea of how ridiculous this is. and yet we're still gonna do it anyway. And I think by the end of the movie, they've basically trashed the idea of the multiverse and yet at the same time kind of upheld it as well. What I also liked about the movie, as you pointed out, the chemistry between Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman is great. It is still predominantly Ryan Reynolds' show and he's the bit that can trouble you, but that's what Deadpool does is he's like this difficult character because you have all this offensiveness and ultra violence and moral flexibility is what it's called in Deadpool yeah. and Wolverine and yet you get these moments of heart as well and these threads in the film of trying to do something for others and self-sacrifice like we saw in the best ever superhero film Logan well at least the best ever Marvel film the of oh, most recent so Wolverine. <laughs> I, like you, came out torn. I wouldn't be rec rushing to recommend it. As you said, kids definitely shouldn't be going to see it. This just revels in its offensiveness. And yet at different times, it's got a beating heart. And you don't know whether to laugh at some of the things. But then also, there's a lot of clever stuff in this film. Did you like all the fourth wall breaking and all the self-references? That was like out of control. Like how many things <laughs> were being said about other movies and Ryan, Re not just MCU, but Ryan Reynolds. And even, I couldn't believe, but there was a joke about Hugh Jackman's divorce. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, everything. I mean, well, they, they even had some of the greatest showman music playing. I mean, all of it's just, it was, that's where the kind of the layers of brilliance were. But also I would have to say that one thing that I think that they did get right, and I'd be curious what your thoughts are on this one, was that I find that with a lot of the superhero films that don't work or kind of fail is that they don't bring out a villain that matches the, um, the hero that's in the story. And I really felt that the combination of Cassandra Nova, who's played by Emma Corrin, and also Mr. Paradox, I think they really did bring the smarminess and also the pure villainy. I mean, there's just evil. Um, kind of that they're coming up against. Did you think so because we've got Deadpool and Wolverine, this double header of superheroes, they went for double header of villains and both British, but and both really <laughs> great at being smarmy <laughs> Brits and Emma Corrin, who is best known for playing Princess Diana in The Crown, the silver spoon version of British villainy <laughs> and Matthew McFadden, totally. who is so great in Succession, is just like amping it up in as Mr. Paradox. Like great casting, but I, and I was impressed too that the movie didn't collapse under the weight of too many superheroes or too many villains. Being in the crowd and just hearing everybody cheering every single time that they had one of their beloved characters came back or the most maligned characters within the Marvel universe that was Fox. But it, I'm curious about something too, was that one thing that really kind of resonated with me is that I'm going oh, is this the next generation of superheroes? Because I grew up with Christopher Reeves as Superman. I grew up you Me know, too. loving Captain America as Chris Evans. But now all of a sudden we're seeing superheroes who are, like you said, very morally flexible. I mean, as are they, they good? As they self-describe.
the level of violence, I think it would have made John Wick blush. I mean, this is just like, wow, this is just next level. And, and didn't you find a lot of it was just for the sake of it? I, I thought like some of it was to see Deadpool and Wolverine go at it, but then you're basically seeing what is effectively video game characters that just can't die. And that's one of their things, they can't die. So they're basically just pummeling them eat themselves in creative ways with as much blood as you can pour out on screen. After a while, like what visually spectacular, but this is leaving me with not much of anything and yeah. the crowd that i was in it was a it was a smaller crowd and i found that they weren't as into it as i expected them to be and for someone who hadn't kept up on the mcu i found it was a really actually a good crash course in what's been happening but at the same time all the jokes that were going on they're almost too many and they're often too witty i think yeah. For at least some people that I was in the audience, I think that I'm not trying to have a go at them. I just think it, it was going through so fast that people didn't seem to register it. And then you have these massive blasts of violence and then you get back to these rapid fire insulting jokes. And it just seemed to leave people a little bit like, I'm enjoying this, I think but I'm not really sure what's going on, but I think I like it. Well, it definitely had that wink, wink, nudge, nudge, kind of get what you're saying, you know, when you're breaking the fourth wall and all the things that they did along those lines. But this was goes, goes back to your exposition that I think was really fascinating was that they start with the whole thing about Deadpool wanting to matter. He often, I just don't matter. You know, like, what am I doing here? You know, he goes to the Avengers, he gets rejected by them. There's all these different things. And so I think they're really tapping into something that all of us kind of experience at different times in our lives as far as purpose and matter. So there's a depth to the story that I was actually kind of surprised by that they were able to kind of tap into, but also this kind of moves us to uh, looking at the whole purpose and who is God, even though within the film, yes, you, just so you know, this is a spoiler. He does call himself the Marvel Jesus. And so oh, if you yeah. want to see the sacrilegious- like, Way, oh way too often, we should have raised that earlier. And, and I thought yeah. even just the idea of it wasn't that strong and they kept going with it all the way through. I'm like, oh, really? I thought you might've come up with something I don't know, a little bit better than that. As, a little bit better Like than that, almost yeah. blasphemy aside and how affronted I was. I'm like, oh, it just doesn't seem that strong a through line. No. But, but you're right, we should have touched on that earlier. I, I think that these are, that's the only thing that I do enjoy about films like this. I think that, that the opportunity of kind of unmasking some of the bigger things that are trying to be kind of said, um, what they're really trying to do. I mean, I think that you can bring in a biblical idea, a biblical framework, into those conversations. I mean, it's, I mean, when it's right there for you, you know, the, uh, the MCU Jesus, but then also when you're looking at also, how, do I matter in my purpose? I think that that's where I think that we can kind of bring that film and faith together, which I'm kind of surprised by with a film like this, that you're able to do that. I mean, not only, and also along the lines of just the value of friendship. Um, that you're able to see not only in the oh, real life friendship I, I thought the era of bromances was over Russ I thought the <laughs> 2000 had finished that off with Ben Stiller Ron Wilson Will Ferrell the frat pack and then this was a, a, an explosion there was so much nostalgia in the movie anyway for superhero films particularly but the bromance throwback exactly not just in the movie but in all of the marketing I feel like they've duped the entire world into basically watching on and paying for their friendship like it, it's, exactly. it's incredible that these celebrities are people that you feel like you're mates with and you want to hang out with even though they go off and buy English football teams and they're clearly like you're not operating in the same <laughs> league I am and yet I'm seeing them swan around the world doing all sorts of funny stuff and you still like them and, and that's one of the things about the movies and that they really harness Ryan Reynolds is ultra likable even when he's trying not to be and Hugh Jackman does a great sort of straight bat almost straight man gruff guy exactly, alongside totally. him and so you do want to hang out with them more but like you I was also struck by a movie like this that actually does have more depth than what you might expect even of its own making and going back to I was struck more by moral flexibility and thinking about why am mm, I so yeah. torn about this character and why does Deadpool keep leaving me so uh and it's i think because as much as on the one hand you're saying you're doing this for others and you want to matter and you want purpose constantly eroding that by just going back to the ways that he's operated before either in insult or violence or selfishness or whatever it might be if you're searching after purpose and meaning and you want to make a difference I think change would be involved in that i think you would need to yes. be taken seriously and to make a difference to, to really matter, you would need to turn from some of the ways that are conflicting with that and head more towards if you are striving for 
self-sacrifice or to be there for others. We'll be there for others. Stop going on about all this other stuff as well. And I was putting that up against the relationship you can have with God and Jesus and the example of Jesus in contrast with Marvel Jesus and thinking yeah. about how they call us towards a life of this that is turning from that. And Deadpool and Wolverine, I think, is a really good example of someone who's kind of torn there in the middle. They want to go this way, but they basically are, I think, unwilling, possibly unable, or just have not looked into how might I go about changing for the better. I mean, these are all great points. And I think that that's what's fascinating about this is that even though they may be a film that I wouldn't necessarily recommend for everyone to see and definitely not for families and definitely not for children, there are opportunities to kind of open the door, if you're gonna go see it, to actually having deeper conversations about it. And I hopefully that's what people will be able to gain from this. So I guess we kind of hit the end of our time here, but I have to ask you, Ben, so would you put this on your watch list? Mm, I think I'm gonna have to say no, because of all of the content in it that is just so confronting for people. But I will say in its defense, I found it a great crystallization of the anti-hero superhero movie. Uh, for me, I would definitely say for the Marvel, um, fans, I think this is one that you'll probably need to see, but I definitely would say don't take your children with you. Uh, make sure that you're not taking it, you're, anybody that you would be embarrassed to watch this sort of movie with. For me, it probably moved down off the watch list as far as wanting to go see it. It's not one I'd want to go watch again, uh, but it'll be fascinating to see MCU kind of goes on after this. So, hey Ben, it's been great having you on the watch list. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you, Russ. And um, I look forward to kind of uh, further chats over the next few weeks. And if you want to hear more from Ben and also hear more of the watch list, you can go to Hope103.2 and also realdialogue.com. That's R-E-E-L dialogue.com. You can subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And also make sure you go check out the videos on YouTube. You get to see Ben and myself. I mean, it's more important you get to see Ben. But he, he, <laughs> on YouTube, you get to check that out also. And also, we just thank you so much for coming along and listening to the watch list. Look forward to hearing it. Make sure you comment below what you think about the movie and also the discussion. And we look forward to talking to you on the watch list again soon.